people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to quite a few things actually. Number one, welcome back to a decorated office. As you can see, I have finally finished reorganizing all of my FNAF merchandise around the office and I will be doing a room slash merchandise tour very soon. Number two, welcome back finally to another video. I feel like I've been saying that in every upload this year. I'm so so sorry, I've been very busy with reorganizing the office and also, you know, some personal stuff, IRL stuff I had to deal with, but hopefully things have slowed down and I'm ready to get back into videos this time. And finally, number three, welcome back to yet another reaction to a game theory on FNAF Security Breach. This is the final one, so we've been told. The final one of this trilogy of security breach theories, but I have a feeling we're not done just yet, or who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong. But for now, this is the finale of these reactions to game theory. This one is a whopping 25 minutes, and like I said, it's the final clue that almost solves FNAF. Because I am so unfortunately late to this, I do know a few things. I know it mostly talks about Gregory and the CDs, and Gregory possibly being a robot, which I'm still not completely on board with, but who knows, maybe Matt will pull me into that theory. But yeah, it's 25 minutes, it's been so long since we last reacted to these, I'm already late, so let's not waste any more time and let's hop into the video. So this is Game Theory FNAF, the clue that almost solves everything FNAF security breach. The fact that he says almost solves everything, I feel like there's gonna be a few loose threads, you know, not a definitive conclusion in this video, which I'm open to. I feel like the lore with this game is all over the place, so I can't blame Matt for not coming to what I'm assuming to be a not a definitive conclusion about what's going on. Hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss more reactions to game theory in the future. Three, two, one, here we go. Today, we end the horror. Today, we solve FNAF. Wait, didn't we say this exact same thing seven years ago? I think it was almost identical to that, yeah. I don't like how it's all distorted. Hi, Vanny. Music man. That is kind of creepy, though. Hello, Internet. Ugh. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that reminds you that if you click the like button hard enough, it'll summon DJ Music Man music to your neighborhood man. for a block party. Go ahead, try it. Hit that like button. Try it Didn't on my hurt? video, have too. You, have you tried clicking subscribe? I hear that sometimes works, too. Do that on I mine, too. Not be clicking hard enough. I don't know what to tell you. Speaking of not working hard enough, aren't you tired of just plain, boring merch? The kind that yes. you buy and oh sure my it gosh, looks cool, Matthew. but it just sits there on your body not doing anything interesting. Well, what if your merch was actually a puzzle? Introducing the world's first quest jacket. I know what you're thinking. A denim jacket isn't anything revolutionary, and you'd largely be right, except you'd also be missing also, one of the uh, most crucial The details. reason I'm letting Those this patches, play is because just any I'm watching his video, I'm profiting patches, from just watching his video. The least I can do is let him advertise his t shirts or his It's not his just a jacket, it's the world's first ARG jacket. You heard that right. A world first. It's not every day that you create that like, is the first dope. of something, <laughs> but to all my research, awesome. I don't think a product like this has ever existed. And We've it actually looks cool. been working for the past two years to make something like this happen. Working with garment manufacturers to sew secrets into places that they've never even thought about mm. before. Obviously, I don't want to give too much away because part of the fun is letting you guys solve this for yourself, but we pulled out all the stops to give you a piece of clothing that you can actually That does look experience. really cool. This thing is premium to the <laughs> max. And if you manage to solve it, you get a special final patch to show that you are Ooh. truly the puzzle master. So go ahead, head on down to the Sounds description cool. and be a part of history. Very interesting, the first Matthew Patrick. Sure. Air G clothing and what will be the first in our series of quest jackets. Ooh. Roll an investigation check to see if you've got what it takes. Today we finish milking. Interesting. I, I mean, covering the major mysteries <laughs> of security breach. And you know what? I think I solved it. Or at least I think oh. I've solved most of it. Yeah. Seven years ago, I made this video, The Clue That Solves Five Nights at Freddy's, Seven where we put together all ago. the pieces to support Dream Theory, the concept that the first four games of the series were all a collection of nightmares happening inside the mind of a child. In that episode, there were a lot 
lots of points of evidence, but ultimately oh, the, the conclusion days. hinged on one key design detail, the alarm that brought each night to a close at 6 o'clock a.m. A grandfather clock for three games and a digital clock for number four. Right. Three games in the crying child's house where we see a grandfather clock, the fourth in a hospital right before he dies, which ironically enough is the one whose gameplay is happening in a recreation of the house. <laughs> oh, there's a reason this series is so difficult to talk about. Anyway, the yeah. reason I bring that video up is because today's <laughs> theory works largely That's a in the banger same way. Thumbnail. Over the past few FNAF episodes, I've been trying to make heads or tails of security breach, pulling at what, to me, felt like the strongest thread. Gregory as the crying child reborn in a robot body. Him reuniting okay. with his brother Michael in the form of Glamrock Freddy and his sister Elizabeth in the form of Vanessa. And we've covered a lot of evidence trying to support that claim. The character's design, <laughs> colors, the ice cream, the voice mm -hmm. lines, robotic eyes, the satisfying narrative arc that it provides the game's three-star ending. I mean, it's a lot. There are two episodes that are jam-packed full of discussion around exactly this. But today, right. I finally have my smoking gun. The clue Ooh. that takes it from just a controversial theory to, at least in my mind, largely proven fact. Just like with the All clocks right. and the dream theory, it's the one clue that is so specific, so intentional that it confirms that this was the main intent of the game. Until, of course, they decide to retcon it all due to bad audience feedback to keep the franchise going for another seven years. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I hate to say True. it, but I think I'm unfortunately right this time. Gregory is a robot, and he's the crying child reborn. And by the end of today, I think you're gonna be convinced. All right. And then from Let's there, we're gonna it, talk about how all of that factors into the game's narrative and its final mystery, Patient 46. It all begins here, the post-it room. Huh, what? This is unexpected. <laughs> After exploring the sewers to decommission Chica, Gregory winds up here, a room full of glowing staff bot heads and lots of post-it reminders on literally every surface. I mean, right. this thing is a flashing neon sign that says, <laughs> important lore here. And yet in online discussions, it's been largely overlooked because it's kind of sandwiched in the middle of the game, overshadowed by the animatronic spaghetti monster ending. And even <laughs> though I knew that something had to be hidden in here, trying to figure it out was like finding a needle in a haystack. So what is this? What are we looking at here? I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah? Mirror is it mat. Obvious, Matt? What, what is it? You get to a certain age. Uh huh. Right. And you just, you gotta start taking notes. <laughs> uh, Post it notes? Yeah, you just leave them around. Okay. But also, there's, um,. Robot heads. So with that incredible insight, I, do that. I spent literal hours off camera trying to look at every single post-it note to make sure that I had the full picture. And the answer I got was, don't, do not do that. Learn from <laughs> my mistakes. It took me so long, so long, only to discover that the game files had been dug up and the oh, post-it no. textures were just there in three simple images. Thanks to just XFOT for uploading these to GitHub. Flush oh. those hours of my life down the toilet. When you study Matt. these post-it <laughs> textures, you actually realize that there are three phases to the post-it notes. One that's barely legible, another where the spelling and drawing improve slightly, and the final where they become nearly perfect. It looks like someone is trying to learn how to write and draw, slowly okay. getting better over time. And it all begins here with a note written in binary. When you first enter the room, there's a cardboard box in the middle, which, if I were to guess, is steel wool trying to draw our attention to the most important post-it clues <laughs> in what otherwise is a very crowded and busy looking room. On it, we get this binary string, which translates to, why is I? That's it. The grammar, I think, is intentionally mm. bad because this is a computer coming into consciousness, asking the question, why am I alive? And doing it written in binary, the language of machines, computers, robots. Elsewhere in the room right. is more binary that translates to hide. Whatever this thing is, it's scared and it's confused. It hides until it can better understand what or who it's meant to be. The other illegible phase one notes here are random flashing thoughts. The sky, kids, love, random glimpses <laughs> of memories coming coming into focus. The phrase, I can feel it, is this creature coming into consciousness. And this right here, you are something family, which looks like Afton family, but it's pretty unclear. In short, it appears to be a machine that started speaking in binary, but as more and more memories start to take hold, it begins to write in normal alphabetic characters. Hello. When you dive into the notes from phases <laughs> two and three, though, things start to get much clearer. It's mainly it's images like and text revolving around birthday parties, happy place, birthday time, family, a pile of presents, some cake. Let's get snack. Fun, fun, <laughs> fun. Friends forever. Pizza time. Nothing pizza particularly earth-shattering for a series about pizza restaurants. But then there's one post-it in the phase three notes that really stands out. The one clue that truly brings together the last two months of research. This thing is the linchpin. It's our smoking gun, my friends. Pause and it all jam. boils down to a present alongside three simple words. All for me. The party was all for me. Does that mean anything to you? Because it's certain. 
certainly does for me. The you see, log in the FNAF yes, survival the log book. All right, an innocuous workbook full of peaceful right. and activities. You have three voices. You've caught my interest, pages. Matthew. Michael Afton writing his answers in red pen. The vengeful spirit Cassidy using lightly faded text, and the crying child altering the physical text of the book. One conversation that happens between Cassidy and the crying child <sighs> plays Dabbing out like Chica. this. Cassidy says the party was for you, and the crying child responds, "It was for me, all for me." Suddenly, all the party imagery makes sense. The balloons, Damn. the cake, the kids. This is the bite victim, the crying child, coming into consciousness and remembering the birthday party that took his life. And using this context, suddenly everything in these notes takes on a whole new meaning. In the first phase of notes, we see a crudely drawn house with a set of arrows pointing towards what looks to be a strange set of doors. Maybe another building? Which admittedly doesn't make much sense unless this is the crying child, who, in FNAF 4, would walk down and to the right and then back up to go to Freddy's with his brother hmm. every single day. In the phase three notes, we see this close-up <laughs> of Bear, which would have been the last thing that the crying child saw before his oh. head got chomped. Blue, yellow, green, and red? Those are the flashing lights above the Fredbear stage as he gets bit. Or, you know, maybe it's the balloons on well. the nearby table for someone who can't tell the difference between blue and purple. Even things eh. like hide and no hide relate to the crying child's behavior throughout FNAF 4. He hides under tables, and he is constantly made fun of for it throughout the game. We also see a lot of dialogue about running away, just like on the post-its. Digging deeper, we also start to see other patterns emerging. The number seven shows up repeatedly as both a set of tally marks as well as a set of six faces with a smaller seventh one off to the side. This ties us directly back to FNAF VR, where we had a glitching purple gravestone for Afton in the middle of seven in normal episode. gravestones. <laughs> Five missing children, Charlie the puppet, and the smaller face watching on, the crying child. As he says in other notes, all my friends. There's okay. also repeated use of the number three. Three faces, three kids, words repeated three times, like home, 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 and fun, 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 three slices of pizza, three presents, even just counting to the number three. <laughs> so what would that mean? Well, think about it. We've seen a lot of references to a house and family throughout these post-its. Seems to me like it's a reference to the three Afton kids, Michael, Elizabeth, and the crying child himself. And the <laughs> thing that brings all of it together isn't a post-it note, but instead the table higher up in the room where we see the right. staff bots the arranged staff like a family the at dinner. Family. A mother and a father alongside their three kids. One red-headed pigtailed girl, one boy, and a kid with his head bit off. And just to hammer it all home, in the middle of the table, the collectible is a poster for Fred Bear's family diner. The place of the bite. The place where all of this began. It looks like the robot finally figured out who he was, and he started to recreate his family. The robot is the crying huh. child, which by proxy then has to be Gregory. And if you need further proof of humanoid robots in the game, Illy Becky on Reddit caught this detail from Sister Location. Humanoid heads, ones that look very similar to Gregory's face. Oh, Dude, and a last thing, much to everyone's excitement, there's actually a new heads. book series coming out later this year. A new season of Fazbear Tales Friends of the Pizza Tales Plex. from the Pizza Plex. Obviously More goddamn the books, let's go. And security breach. The cover of the first book in the new series? Right. Robot Kid. There it is. Which leads us then to the last puzzle of security breach, the retro CDs. For those of you who don't know, okay. there are 16 CDs around the map that you can only find oh, interesting. once you've upgraded I think he's Freddy's moving eyes. On from there, you take the CDs to a hidden that, room that's designed certainly to look exactly like Mike's room from wow. Sister Location. These CDs seem to be recordings of the therapy sessions for two patients. Patient 71, who we mentioned last time is clearly Vanessa, and Patient 46, who we never get to hear speak. And over the course of the various sessions, 46 and 71 are set up to be direct opposites of each other. Vanessa likes flowers, Patient 46 does not. Oh, you like those? The janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. What's the problem? Oh, the flowers? I'll move them. Vanessa likes huh. blue skies and doesn't like dark basements. 46 prefers it dark. I like the blue sky. I don't like dark basements. Oh, right. Too bright. When the shade's pulled, it feels like we're in a cubbyhole or a cave. Yeah? Vanessa doesn't like candy. 46 does. Would you like a candy? No, thank you. Those have 35 calories apiece. Sure, you can have a candy. Clearly, we're meant to see these characters as opposites, which is why right. so many people online considered that patient 46 might actually be Vanny, Vanessa's alter ego possessed by Glitch Trap, or even more extreme, Vanessa's evil twin sister, oh. considering the fire ending shows us a dead I Vanny really on the ground don't like and that. Vanessa looking down from the burning I've building's always hated roof. The but two let's Vanessa's quickly talk about those two interpretations. Theory. First of all, Vanessa and Vanny are the same person. They right. have to be. All the evidence leading up to this game in places like FNAF Special Delivery 
deliveries exactly. have pointed to a woman named Vanessa A getting mind hacked by Afton and reluctantly following his orders. And in this exactly. game, we still have pieces of evidence. For instance, in the CDs, we learn that Vanessa is buying fake fur to make the Vanny costume. On your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a costume. You purchased some yes. fake fur material. What are you gonna make? If she's not the one wearing it, why would she be making it? To me, the fire ending here is meant to be symbolic. We yes. haven't beaten Princess Quest Thank yet, you. so Vanessa's spirit is still trapped inside that burning yes. building. But her body has died. She is yes. one person. But could the persona of Vanny actually be Patient 46? Again, the evidence just doesn't seem to add up to that. Throughout their sessions, we get multiple indications that the therapist is speaking to a child. The way they speak to Patient 46 here... You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? I could be put in the corner for a time out. Yeah, you think that's funny, huh? Uh, and again here... Tragedy always leads to a feeling of loss. It's a hole that feels funny, right? The way they explain simple words... And I'm surprised by your knowledge of computers. You're something of a phenom. Do you know what that word means? It means you have unusual skill, like a hacker. The way they point out that 46 doesn't fit into the chair. That chair doesn't really fit you, does it? They even mention the fact that they specifically work with children. You know, I work with people huh. of all ages, from little kids to the very elderly. I understand that therapists would want to treat alters as they see themselves, but this just doesn't seem to fit. At no point do we get an indication that Vanny sees herself as a child. But now let's go back to what we assume we know about okay. 46. They're a kid, they like the dark, they like candy, they're really good with computers, Computers. In fact, they're a bit robotic themselves, answering questions in cold, detached ways. When I read your account of what happened, it came across as, well, more of an objective rather than a subjective narrative. Oh, sorry. You don't know what that sorry. means, do you? Here again, we get another example of the therapist having to explain a relatively simple word. Now, look at our post-it room. It's a dark cave underground, outright huh. labeled as this is my home. On the central cardboard box is a drawing of candy. And a robot would be emotionally detached and would also be great at hacking. Heck, the therapist does tell patient 46 to write down their feelings. I suggested you write down exactly what made you so sad and scared. And if this room isn't an example of that, I don't know what is. Hmm. Taking it one step further, if right. I'm right in saying that Gregory is indeed the robot that came into consciousness here. That's why he doesn't fit into the chair. He's a kid. That's also the reason Steel Wool couldn't let us hear 46's I voice still. throughout these therapist tapes. It would give away the game. It would immediately take away the mystery of who 46 is since we hear Gregory talk so much. But why would Gregory, right. a robot kid hiding out in the pizza plex, actively be seeking out therapy? He's not in a school of any kind hmm. and he's not employed so it wouldn't be mandated. What is going and on he's here? A robot, well, over the course allegedly. of the 16 CDs, oh. we listen as both patients 46 and Vanessa visit a total of five therapists, all of whom are implied to have been mangled to death by machinery. But the deaths here aren't arbitrary. If you track the tapes, each therapist ends up getting killed off immediately after they start asking Vanessa about encrypted messages yep. that she's been receiving from a mysterious figure. Your performance reviews are good, but a routine check of your online history has revealed that you spent quite a bit of time with someone in an encrypted conversation. We have transcripts, and I've read them. Dead the next session. The messages you're getting seem Rip. very manipulative in nature. You know who I'm talking about. Why won't you open up about it? These files are full of details about your life. Again, dead the next session. When the encrypted messages get brought up to 46, same thing. When no. I saw some of your recent encrypted conversation logs, at first, I thought I was looking at more examples of you just talking with yourself. Then I realized it was different. When I study this, it sounds like there is someone else responding to you. A third therapist bites the dust. The therapists cover all sorts of topics. Bad childhoods, work history. One therapist even confronts patient 46 with all the other dead therapists. <laughs> Nothing. No response. So, uh, hey, what happened to these encrypted these messages people? come up that they're suddenly marked for death. We also know that it's 46 doing the killing here. The dead therapists are a complete surprise to Vanessa. Hi. Go ahead. Sit down. I don't know you. What happened to... Oh, we'll get to know each other in no time. But to 46, it's just business as usual. Why did you lie? Why don't we come back to this another day? You're shaking your head as though that's not going to happen. 
He's shaking his head because he knows that uh -oh. now she is also marked for death. To me, all of this screams of 46 keeping tabs on Vanessa. He's going to therapy not for himself, but rather to follow her actions, making sure that she's not saying anything that she shouldn't about these encrypted messages. And when the therapists do get too close to the truth, they're bumped off. We learn in one of the last CDs that patient 46 isn't being manipulated, but is instead the one doing the manipulation. Right. I don't think you're being manipulated here. I think you're the one doing the manipulating. No comment? Huh? Putting two and two together would tell us that patient 46 is the one communicating with Vanessa. He's controlling her life for some reason. In fact, 46 appears to be the reason Vanessa huh. is working at the pizza plex in the first place. One odd detail of the in-game messages is that Vanessa was not supposed to right. get the security job. In the message marked for deletion, we see that Vanessa's lack of security experience gets the interviewer to not recommend her for the job. And yet, she's hired anyway, despite, as it says in another message, no prior qualifications. In both messages, we're told that it's an internal reference coming from the top that got her the job. Someone has brought Vanessa here for a specific purpose. And who better than a hacker that's clearly established to be in the Pizza Plex's emails? Patient 46, Gregory. In short, it looks like Gregory is manipulating the situation. Determined to get Vanessa to work at the Pizza Plex, following her to all her mandated therapy sessions, and ultimately killing off anyone that gets too close to the truth. I mean, after all, Gregory is not opposed to using a bit of violence to get what he wants. But we why? have to get these. We could upgrade you! Wouldn't it make more sense if it was Glitch Trap bringing He's her also there to not rebuild? To lying about it. This upgrade you know? It's was Chica's. Please be honest. How did you get it? When I was in the kitchen earlier, she fell into some sort of garbage smasher. Is she okay? Still functional. Well. She's still functional. But why? So, why is he going to all of this effort? Well, combine it with what we saw in the post-it room. There's a family reunion scene. Multiple post-its referring to family. The three siblings, their house. Remember what I said earlier? A robot has come into consciousness and is trying to reclaim what he lost. His family. He wants the family back together. And so he's doing everything in his power to make that happen. Using his hacking skills, he's managed to break into staff files. So he knows that there's something off about Vanessa. That. Maybe he even knows that his dad's consciousness is inside of her. He's also mm. got his brother and Freddy and his dad in the basement. The family in this game is truly coming together again, reclaiming what crying child once lost. And that's it. That's the whole okay. theory done. There are definitely no holes or I, flaws to anything uh, I just yeah, said. Don't I mean... <laughs> look any deeper than everything I just told you. All right, fine. There might be a few itty bitty holes to all of this explanation. Namely, some of the info that we get from the last two CDs. If patient 46 is Gregory, then why is he glitching the system to make all the animatronics scarier? If he lured Vanessa True. to the pizza plex, then why would he then be avoiding her throughout right. the game? Why would he be surprised to see Afton in the basement if he's trying to bring the family all together? He, There's also the mystery thing? of the whole parent story. 46 is said to have good parents. None of what you said in your file about your parents was true. The truth is, you had great parents. A great childhood. Why did you lie? But how would records of good parenting exist for a robot who presumably had no parents? Or the crime right. child whose records right. presumably would say that he was dead? Or even if you don't believe those theories, if 46 is Gregory and Gregory's just a homeless he's home kid, yeah, it doesn't homeless. sound like he would have had a great childhood or any sort of home life. But the kicker, the one to me that makes this really difficult to explain, is this email that I had long forgotten about from FNAF AR. Oh boy. Strap in for this one, friends. Hey Ness, I hope things are good. I saw you hey, order three lifelike human male rubber masks and I was dying to ask what they're for. Sounds to me like a robot kid is confirmed but it also sounds to me like Vanessa built it or gave rise to this robot kid. If so wow. then I ask again why would Gregory be avoiding her throughout the game? I mean the best I could come up with is that somehow Gregory escaped and is now convinced that Vanessa is trying to shut him down because of his rogue programming. I mean it's not a bad idea but then why would he be luring her to the pizza plex? It's like one half of each huh, explanation yeah. works but then when you try to connect it back with that, like that the is other Frustrating. The theory, they end up contradicting each other, which is really frustrating. There are two yeah. other options. First, the robot kid from the post-it room is entirely brand new. Or the second option is it's someone that we never see in the game, Baby. Now, the first option of a brand new character, yeah, it's cool, I guess. I, I can't really speculate about that. It could literally go anywhere and solve everything. As for option two, Baby, just like with Gregory, there are certain things that fit and other things that just don't. Baby, like Gregory, could want to put the family back together. Baby has always wanted to make dad. Yeah. 
yeah, but proud, so she'd be quite happy to kill off therapists that got in too this close scenario, to the truth. Just aren't like you with trying 46. to argue that and Elizabeth she would willingly spread the Vanessa? Afton virus to so... make the animatronics scary in order to bring Daddy back? If she's using illusion discs, or if she acts like she does in the books, then it's possible that she'd be able to take the form of a child and make up a backstory. She's also a character that canonically loves disguises, just like Patient 46. It reminds you of a mask? A uh, I don't disguise? think it's baby at all. Yeah, I can see that. You like the idea of being disguised? Disguises let you be sort of invisible. I feel like that would come out of nowhere. There's also a line about the therapist being able to see Patient 46's eyes. That's better. On this side of the desk, I can see your eyes. And we know that baby's eye color has always been an important detail in the past. But as with yeah. Gregory, there are still a number of holes with this line of thinking. Baby slash Elizabeth likes flowers. Patient 46 doesn't. We True. also know Baby hates being in the basement of sister location. So then why, as patient 46, right. would she prefer right. to live in a cave rather Ugh. than blue sky? In short, as I wrap up my overall coverage of Security Breach, I guess I gotta summarize it like this. This game is frustrating from a lore standpoint. Smaller questions like Glamrock Bonnie and Golden Freddy, yeah, those are pretty easy to answer. But when it comes to what this game was actually about, no one theory actually solves it all in a clean way. There are references to every corner yeah. of the FNAF universe in here, but as a result, nothing fits cleanly together to solve everything. There are pieces that always dangle or always contradict something else. Do I think the crying child is here based on the post-it room? Yes, absolutely. Is he Gregory? I mean, right now, I think that he's our best option. Is he also patient 46? Urgh, it seems like he's trying to be, <laughs> but there are just a lot of holes uh, there. And there are holes in the baby game, theory man. too. And that honestly just leaves the option of a mysterious third party pulling the strings behind the scenes, which on one hand would be welcome. I'd love to see a new character inserted into this lore. But on the other hand, it also feels unsatisfying because it's like, well, that came out of nowhere. This franchise has never operated like that, so it feels weird for it to start acting that way now. Individually, small pieces of the mystery make sense, but when you take a step back and look at the wider lore of this series, right. how it connects to other games, how it connects to the wider story arc, you can feel the pain created, in Matt's voice. Like, clearly, it's, it's just And I think that is what mess. is so frustrating with this title. So that's what I'm left with. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you seeing things that I'm not? Hopefully it at least sparked some <laughs> ideas in of 87. Hey, if it did, you can let me know live right now. I am right, they did a whole live, live stream. other members of Team Theorist, other FNAF I didn't, tubers, I didn't watch all of us it. You guys, covering if you things watched about it, let me know in the comments. My How hot was takes it? on the security breach lore, other theories that we haven't covered yet, and of course, just generally chatting about what we thought of the game, where we think the franchise is going, and what we predict will be the yeah. upcoming DLC. Nothing is off the table, friends. So if you have FNAF <laughs> theories yourself, throw them out there and we can discuss them live. Link is down in the description right now. Stop on right. by, join us for some good old-fashioned live theory crafting. And while you're down there, just one last reminder to head on over to our merch store to get your hands on wow, the first cool of its jacket. Nine quest jacket. There's a very limited number of Damn, these available because it was very costly to make them. So if you want your hands on the first ever puzzle jacket, make I'm sure waiting you're for the line, Matt. Say the funny below. line. See you over on the live stream. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Let's go, he Thanks said the thing. Watching. That was good. Um I, like I said at the start of the video, I wasn't fully convinced on the whole Gregory being the crying child, but as a robot now. I, after all the evidence, I think it's at least plausible. You know, it's definitely, there's so much evidence that you can't just throw it away anymore. Um, and, and honestly, Matt, you know, did kind of convince me with all the post-it notes and the overall, like, arching story. That does make sense in a way. But at the same time, I can also see a lot of the frustration with trying to solve everything and put it together with the new game. I've mentioned this several times in the past. I don't really care a whole lot about the lore at this point, um, especially because of situations like this where you get so much and then you try to piece it together and it just doesn't fit well at all anymore. So it's difficult and it's frustrating and I think a lot of people harp on Matt a lot, but I think he's, he's, he honestly does such a fantastic job trying to put things together, and you can see, like, this was a 25 minute long video. The finale video of, like, three different parts, like, you can tell he, he tries his, his damnedest, and I think it's, it's very dis, not disappointing, very unfortunate that there's no solid ending, and that's, that's nothing on Matt, you know, I, I do think he tries his best. I think it has to do with the game. You know, I know Matt's not the only one who is feeling this way about the game. I feel that way. I think the lore was a complete mess in the new game. And you can see examples of these videos. You know, like, you, you watch Matt try and put it all together. It doesn't 
go together well, there's holes, it doesn't make sense, you know, there's so many different options, but they contradict each other. It's frustrating. But I think at the end of the day, this was this was a very good series, and I and I highly respect Matt for putting so much effort into a game that from again a lore standpoint is very very difficult to to understand but that is going to do it for today a very long video a very long reaction but hopefully you guys enjoyed like i said at the start a whole bunch of videos coming very very soon we got the new fnaf AR merchandise wave from funko revealed i gotta do a room tour of the brand new decorated office and a whole bunch of other news and also the the patch for security breach is coming out soon i need to talk about that also my thoughts on what the DLC could be. A lot of content, I promise, is coming very, very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.